my name is Caden back for another video today today we're going to replace uh, the ignition control module the ICM which is this right under your coil packs now the symptoms you'll be getting for that will make you you know need to replace this so what my car was doing is it'd be driving fine and then all of a sudden it will just uh, stall out of nowhere and it would not restart until it cooled off basically is what was happening is that this pretty sure was getting overheated and yeah causing it to short out so I actually have another Buick with Sabre sitting over yonder that I pulled the ICM off of but that ICM is also bad so I found out what was wrong with both cars because now this car does the same thing that Buick was doing except this one with my old module took about a week before it finally threw code 42 which is the electronic spark timing uh, which basically uh, after your engine exceeds a certain amount of RPMs your computer takes over the ignition system and if that ignition control module isn't sending that bypass signal it will throw that code and possibly make your engine misfire slash stall and it, you'll notice quite the lack of acceleration as well and what you might want to look for this is my old one as you see there's a uh, there's a crack here in the rubber and it's probably been like that for a while but I'm pretty sure moisture was getting inside and it was causing this to short out internally and that's a common issue on these vehicles so if you have any of these symptoms you might want to look at one of these and they're only about 125 125 bucks at O'Reilly so it's not too horrible of a cost you know to get the old beater running again so I'm gonna go in and show you how we can replace this first thing you'll want to do simple just uh, disconnect your uh, negative battery cable so there's no power to it the next thing we're going to do is disconnect this plug down here and you can use a 9 30 second socket to break that loose and then underneath here uh, if I can point down there possibly we're gonna have there's an 11 millimeter bolt you just saw there there's going to be two possibly three of those um, I know I've moved my ground my negative ground to here but if yours is still down on the block you'll have to take that off because there's more than likely a third nut that's down there because there's three studs but I just left the two on because that's all you really need there's no really no need for that uh, extra third one so I'm gonna go ahead and disconnect this plug and unscrew these three or two however many you have these 11 millimeter bolts on the bottom and you'll want to disconnect your spark plug wires and then this whole thing will come off and you make sure you you might want to label your spark plug wires just in case so you don't mix those up it'll make it a lot easier and I'll be back when I get some more progress all right we have removed the ignition control module so it's all just this big uh, one piece and there's the three holes the studs go through so the actual module is right underneath the coil packs so it's going to be this uh, the second black square or you know the one under the coil packs so you're going to uh, remove the three uh, torque screws or six torque screws that uh, remove these coil packs and then you'll expose all those wires that I just showed you on the old one and our new one's just going to be this piece on the bottom uh, the coil packs are a separate part and we don't need those because the coils are fine it's just the module itself so we'll get the new one out of the box and I'll show you how to wire it up real quick alright so here is our uh, ignition module uh, my used one uh, cracked open all the wires are still uh, hooked up here is our new module now this part may seem kind of confusing or tricky but it's really not that bad because the wires are kind of set where they need to be already but just so you know these blue ones the three blue ones are going to go to uh, bank one meaning your odd number cylinders so your odd number cylinders are on the left side of your coil packs and six four or two and four are going to be on the right side of your coil packs 
So just have it lined up how your plug would be and just know that the yellow is going to go to cylinder number four. Green is going to go to cylinder number two and blue is going to go to cylinder number six. And these other three blue wires are going to go to all your even number cylinders and they're already uh, cut to the point where you're just going to go that one to that one, the, the next blue on this one to uh, this one, and this one to this one for your coils. And then on the even side, you just got to match them up and then you'll want to screw your coil packs back on top of it. It comes with a new gasket. You'll want to make sure you do this because that helps seal out the moisture from getting in this and will keep some of the heat out as well. So we're going to rewire this up and we're going to put it back together. All right, so we got our new coils wired up and I'll just crack it open and see. You can see nice new ignition module uh, wires all connected. Make sure your wires are not in the way of any screw holes down here uh, when you put this together. Otherwise, you may pinch them and, you know, shred the coating off of them and then they won't work. And then you've just wasted your money. And then when you do tighten these down, do not over tighten them. Just want them a little snug because these wires underneath, you don't want to squish them too hard. Uh, so when we screw these all back on, we are ready to put everything back together the way it was and I'll show you what that looks like when it's done and then we'll fire it up. Uh, installation is the reverse of removal of course. One thing to note for when tightening this uh, plug down you do not want to over tighten it. Be very careful because apparently the plastic on this is kind of weak and there's already a tiny little crack form so if you get a crack that forms like that just stop where you are but of course uh, you want to make sure this is a good connection because like me one time when I've disconnected that my tachometer line off one of those was not connected all the way and it made my tack whack <laughs> basically and it was just going up and down and it would cause it to hesitate and stuff and all I did was tighten this up some more so if you run into that that's fi fix for that but in other words just make sure it's snug on there and now the last thing we do is disconnect the negative or reconnect the negative battery cable but I gotta grab my thing down there because of course it fell but when we get that back on we'll be finished and then we'll start it up all right, time for the uh, moment of truth. Uh, got it all installed. We're gonna see if the check engine light continues to stay off and if there's any hesitation or shutter while we're idling. So we're about to find out. Turn the key on and... Look at that, no check engine light. Fired right up. Radio static is loud. And we are not shuddering at idle anymore. Everything seems to be running smoothly. Give it a good rev. Don't rev it too hard on a cold engine. You know that. Sounds like we're doing good. So you'll just want to take it for a road test, see if you got your acceleration back, which you should. And hopefully this helps all y'all who are having the same problem with any of their older uh, General Motors cars. This car was a 1990 Pontiac Bonneville, if you didn't already know, with the 3800 and the VIN C engine. And the VIN C ignition coil modules are the only ones, they can only fit on other VIN C engines, like another 1990 Buick or an Oldsmobile 88 or an Electra, something like that. Either way, hope this video helps get you back on the road.